guy. Me again. So I have a question for you. Have you ever started doing something and then completely forget that you started doing it? And a month goes by and then you're like, oh, that's right. I was supposed to do more of that. Well, that's what's happened with this YouTube uh, stuff. I can't believe I did that. Did a video, got excited about being back, got sidetracked doing some other things, completely forgot about this video. Oh man, well, I gotta do better than that. Forgive the beard, like I said, I completely forgot about all this and I was just driving, I'm like, oh, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be doing YouTube videos. Completely forgot. So yeah, I look good. I look grumpy. Been a pretty busy, uh, pretty busy month. Forgive the beeping. I got this radar detector, and anytime I get within uh, 300 feet of a car, it starts beeping on me. I'm driving from Cincinnati to Dayton. It's pretty close to impossible not to be within 300 feet of a car. It's too packed around here. Almost need some kind of virus to take some people. Maybe I shouldn't say that. Oh, I can be mean sometimes. I need to cut that out. <clears throat> I get a drink here and I'll kind of... Alright, so where we were last time, I said I would talk about the uh, prime training experience. I really hope that beeping's not too loud. I wish I could turn the damn thing on. But, uh, the prime training is interesting. I, look, I went back and watched my video right before I started this one. Once I remembered I had it, because I'm an idiot. Uh, and I, I wanted to see where I'd left off. And I noticed in the video I kept saying that we trained for 60,000 miles. We didn't, we trained for 30,000 miles. Uh, I was saying 60 because we ran teams, and for some reason I was thinking that I personally drove 30,000, which means he probably did too, so 60,000. But that's not the case. Actually, it was more like 15,000 for me, 15,000 for him, 30,000 together, which is still better than a lot of companies do. Uh, I don't know about now, but back then, a lot of companies didn't do that much training. You know, I'm not going to speak on Swift's training. I know there's a lot of jokes about Swift. I don't really know much about them other than apparently Swift stands for the Stevie Wonder Institute for Trucking, which I thought that's an interesting anagram for that because I didn't. I don't know why you would name your trucking company after Stevie Wonder. I thought he was one. Uh, it's another Swift joke. You gotta love it. But no, I don't know much about their training, so I can't speak on it. Same with any other ones, because I only went through one. I mean, I looked up a bunch, and I heard what they were talking about, what they were saying. But I didn't actually experience it, so I don't really know what they did. All I know is what Prime did with me. And it was a good experience, like I said. Uh, I ended up having three trainers. I don't remember if I mentioned that in that last video. I don't remember. I don't think I did. Uh, Danny was my, I guess he was kind of my beginner trainer. He could have trained me on through the 30,000 miles, but he was all in it for the bonus money uh, because if you train a guy and he passes a CDL, you get bonus money for that. The only bonus you get when you're training for the 30,000 miles was just the extra bonus of how many more uh, loads you can get in running team, how many more miles you get in running team. Uh, I don't think there was actually any monetary bonus for that. If there was, it wasn't much. Uh, it was mainly just you get the benefit of having a team. Uh, so Denny trained me from the beginning. Once I got my CDL, he, uh, he went, went home for a few days. I went home for a few days. Uh, 
at that point, I'd been gone almost a month, uh, just mainly because of it was January of 2014. Uh, it took a while to get in my hours driving, and actually, when I failed the test the first time. In that video, I said I came back a couple days later. That actually wasn't true. I got to thinking about it. Uh, it was actually almost a week later before I was able to retest because of the snow. We had a snowstorm hit, and it was just cold. And we couldn't clear the training pad. It was nothing but ice. Uh, they didn't really want to put any students driving on their test in icy conditions. So we ended up having to wait about a week. So all said, by the time I'd left the house, Went to Prime, went through the orientation, went out on the road for my hours uh, uh, to get my, to come back and take my actual license driving test, uh, and then passing that, and then getting back home. It was about a month of time. Uh, so, of course, my girlfriend at the time, who is my wife now, was very excited to see me and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so then Danny called me a couple days before he was planning on coming back and getting me and he told me that he was going to send a friend of his to come and pick me up and I was going to do my training with him. Uh, for the life of me, I had his name in my head and now it has just left me. I can see his face. Sean. There we go. His name was Sean. And he was a bigger guy like me. Actually, a little bigger than me, even. And, uh... He, uh... He was a fine trainer. He really didn't have to teach me much. Much. Like I said in the last video, I was already a pretty good driver. I just was cocky on my pre-trip and didn't do what I should have done to prepare for that test. Um... Like I said, I had all the words memorized, but I, I didn't get out and actually learn the parts like I should have. Um, so, he really didn't have to teach me too much. Uh, there was a couple little things that he would bring up, but for the most part, I mean, I think the first night I drove, he, he said, well, you're good to go, and he went ahead and went on to bed. Uh, I've always been a very good with directions, that's one thing when it comes to truck driving. It helps a lot to, to, na to be able to navigate yourself knowing, okay, right now I'm heading north, so that way is east, that way is west, and south is to my back. And being able to look at a map and tell, okay, this is where I'm going to be, this is to the right, so that's going to be east, so when I get off this exit, I'm going to need to go right. Yes, I know you have a GPS, but you can't always follow the GPS. It doesn't always know where you're going. So once you get closer to where you're supposed to be going, that's when you got to realize, okay, the GPS actually told me to take a left here, but if I'm looking, the addresses are actually pointing to where I should be going right. And that's when you got to make the conscious decision of, okay, this GPS doesn't exactly know where this is. I actually need to go right here. And it's always, you know, it's always good to have. It's a good sense of direction. Uh, but anyways, with Sean, it was, uh, it wasn't bad. You know, me and him just kind of, you know, did our thing. I mean, he was, he was big into the night radio, road dog, uh, which, you know, that's what you're into, that's what you're into. I, I did it a little bit with him, but for the most part, I just listened to music. But he liked to get on there and talk to people and that kind of stuff. Uh, but other than that, it was fine. You know, it's like we, we got our miles done fairly quickly. Uh, there wasn't really any big uh, issue with anything, much at all. Well, it, took, it still took about six weeks. And I think during that time, I only might have come home once. And it was hard. Uh, it was hard to be gone that long, that quickly. Uh, my girl.
girlfriend really didn't want me to even start, but especially after starting, she was really starting to miss me. And of course, I was missing her too. Uh, I had a son who was very young, two, two or so years old. Uh, you know, he, it was hard to get used to talking to him through the phone rather than actually, you know, seeing him in person. Uh, you know, a lot of that, even looking back on it, it was, I remember how tough it was. And it got too much. And the sad part is, it's like, I really, I actually finished my miles with Sean to where I could have gone back and went on my own. But instead, and my girlfriend at the time was planning on coming with me. Uh, but instead, I decided to find a job that was local and uh, go do that so that I could be home. So I finished my training, and then I went and did, I, what I did was I worked for a, I, I don't know if I can say the name or not, so I'm not going to say the name, but I worked for a company that we delivered sodas to, you know, convenience stores, gas stations, uh, grocery stores, that kind of deal. And, uh, I hated it. I mean, it was nice to come home, but we, what I did not know was that not only did we deliver it, but we actually had to stock it too. Um, and it just, it wore me out. I mean, I, I'm a hard worker, but to me, it seems a little ridiculous to spend 12 to 14 hours driving a truck and then also merchandising the product. It just didn't really make sense to me. It's like I can understand delivering it and even putting it in a in the cooler for me. Fine, that's fine. But then I gotta stock your guys' shelves. That didn't make sense to me at all. Uh, and it was hard, I mean it was fairly hard work. I mean, you know, I was doing that, that would have been in June and July when I that. So it was dead of summer, Kentucky humidity and heat. I hated it. It just wasn't for me. Like I said, I, I'll be out in the heat and humidity all day farming, but not doing that. So, so I talked to my wife about it, and that was another thing too. When I was coming home, I mean, I was so exhausted. I was up for an hour and going to bed. You know, I started at 4 a.m. I normally got home. six, seven at night, up for an hour, back to bed. So we really wasn't seeing her that much. And not to mention it was over an hour drive for me to get to the place every day that I had to start. Which sucks. That's just too, it was just too much. You know, my day consisted of being, you know, 16, 17 hour day, being gone from the time I left to the time I got home just exhausted when I got home. Now, I'm sure I would have gotten used to it if I'm stuck with it, but I didn't really, I, it wasn't that great of pay. That was another thing, too. I mean, it was okay. It wasn't great. So, I got to talking to her, and I said, you know, I've already finished my training at Prime. I think I just want to go back and maybe just go ahead and go OTR, go over the road, and you can come with me. You know, let me go get my weak orientation over with, get on my truck, and then you can come with me. And, you know, she hesitated, but she agreed. She kind of liked the idea of getting out, not having to work, and just enjoying some time together. I was also going to go do lease purchase, which I have tried on two separate occasions now. Some people can make it work. I'm not one of those people. I think I would be a fine owner-operator. I think I, I suck at being a lease purchase because I it just doesn't work. It's not your truck. Even though you want to think it is, it's still not your truck. Um, but anyway, so I went back to Prime. They, you know, I called, did all the paperwork and everything. They're like, yeah, come back to your orientation, pick out your truck, we'll get you going. Like, all right, great. 
Now remember, I said at the beginning of this video, I had three trainers. I've only mentioned two so far. You get where this is going. So I go in, I do my week's worth of orientation, fill out all the paperwork for the leasing, pick out my truck. That night, they call me and say, we just did everything and you did finish your training, but because you've been absent for over a month, that's no longer valid. And of course, I was pissed. Because that means I had to go back out with another trainer for 30,000 miles. I couldn't believe that. But at that point, I'd already been there, I'd already gotten everything done. I was an experienced driver. I knew there wasn't going to need to be much training really involved. It was just going to be, hey, let's go make some money. So, the guy they ended up setting me up with, his name was Jason. Jason was awesome. He, uh, he as a matter of fact, I still talk to him every now and then. Um, he, uh, he was a younger guy like me, originally from Kentucky, Indiana area. Uh, we got along really well. I mean, we don't see eye to eye on much of anything really I mean some things but we just got along really well uh, I mean anybody that's stuck in a truck with somebody for you know two months you get tired of seeing them there's no doubt about that but other than that I mean me and him got along just fine so we go out we get our get my 30,000 miles done I come back in I pick out my truck and uh, my wife comes out on the road with me. That lasted for about a month and a half. And we both just kind of, I mean, we enjoyed it, don't get me wrong. It's awesome to get out and see places that you would never see if you weren't driving a truck. You're not going to spend the money and just go to every state. I mean, some people can, but most people can't afford to just drive to every state and look at the views. So this gave us a chance to do that, and we did. The problem was, I think my best check in my pocket for that time period might have been around 900 bucks for a week. I don't get paid very well at the job I'm at now, and yet I can make more than $900 a week if I put in a Saturday work, and I don't like, you know, I don't get paid great at this job. So that tells you how much lease purchase did not work for me. Um, Prime's training, I have to say, I, I'm glad I went there for the training. Lease purchase, I've actually, it, it did not, it just didn't work. It did not work for me. Um, like I said, owner operating, I think I'd be great at. Especially now I've got experience working on trucks myself. I can do a lot of maintenance and a lot of the repairs myself. So, you know, I'd save a lot of money doing that. Lease purchase, you don't really get that option. You can't just fix the truck yourself. I mean, there's some things they'll let you do, but more often than not, they want you to take it to the shop. Well, that's money out of your pocket. And that was another thing, too. The truck I had was in the shop every other weekend for DPF filter issues. It's just a pain. And they would not give me another truck, even though I asked. And I understand why. You know, I saw the paperwork. So it was, it was my, my deal, but still you can't proceed and having DPF issues, and especially when this is your first time out doing it, you know, there should be a little bit of leniency. Uh, I wasn't one that was going home every day, you know, trying to get through the house. Once I picked up my girlfriend, you know, I mean, we were gone pretty much the whole time. 
<clears throat> we very rarely came back home. <laughs> um, so that ended my stint in Prime. I ended up, uh, it started in January, and by the time it was all said and done, after I'd already went to the other job, came back with their training again, then got my own truck, and then quit, it was uh, October. So from January to October, I was in and out of crime. That was in 2014. And then uh, I walked away from crime. It was a walk away lease, thank God. So I walked away from it and I drove the truck. This was how bad it got. The DPF filters failed on me again in Kentucky at the house. Because uh, I, I had had plenty of home time finally after like two months of being gone. <clears throat> and uh, I messaged them that the DPF filters were built again, and they wanted me to take it to uh, a place about an hour and a half away. And I said, no, and that's when I was finally aggravated enough that I'm like, no, I just need a new truck at this point. If you aren't willing to let me do that, I guess I'm just going to have to bring this one in. I can't afford. I can't afford to keep paying for these uh, repairs the truck being down because the truck's a turd and they weren't going to let me do that so I finally said well then I guess I'm just going to have to bring the truck in <clears throat> and that's what I ended up doing I drove the truck it was in D-rate mode which means that the fastest I could go with by the time I got to Missouri was about 40 miles an hour so I went down 64 and 44 doing about 40 to 45 miles an hour just to get the truck back to Springfield, Missouri. It was a pain in the ass. But we got it back to him. <clears throat> and I walked away. So uh, so that's kind of how Prime went for me. Like I said, the training was great. The guys, you know, and I think a lot of it had to do with the guys I was training that were training me. You know, if I had a couple of people that just didn't care, just did it for the money, you know, it might not have been as great. But uh, I just got lucky, you know, I really did. But, uh, but the, the lease purchase program for Prime did not work for me. I know there's some people that have made it work, uh, but for me it just didn't work. I didn't like it. Wasn't making much money. A lot of it has to do with your dispatcher, too. I, I'm not going to blame my dispatcher for everything. Some of it was my fault, too. The way I was running, I'm sure, could have been better. I was new to it, but uh, yeah, I just, I, it, it just wasn't all that great. So that's, uh, that's how that ended. And me and my wife drove back home, and I started my new adventure, which I will continue in the next video. You guys be good, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.